Hi, my name is Lestasia Coleman, and I will be speaking to you about how we can scale up the midwifery workforce to address maternity care provider shortages here in the US. This is an acknowledgement of the HRSA funding that um, Iowa received um, with the Department of Public Health and the University of Iowa Department of OB-GYN partnering together to deliver the services on the grant. Um, my project on this grant is to start a midwifery education program in Iowa. So we received this grant in 2019 and we have a few educational programs related to physicians and midwives, and so we are in the process of getting the midwifery program up and going. Just to give a quick high level overview of the program's progress in the first year of the HRSA grant, we um, completed a contract with the consulting group and completed a feasibility study and needs assessment where we did some key stakeholder interviews and completed and presented our report to those stakeholders. The um, second year involved getting administrative approval to move forward with the program and beginning the process of applying for pre-accreditation. Um, that took um, over a year to get ready to go um, into year three and the pre-accreditation site visit happened this past May. Um, we will be hearing back from the accreditor sometime in the coming weeks and are just in the process of making those more detailed programmatic decisions that we need to make. In years four and five, we'll have our first and second classes admitted, and year five will bring graduation of our first cohort. So when we look at midwifery education in the United States versus the workforce of midwives in the United States, we can see that the diversity of the student population in 2018 um, was more reflective of the direction we're hoping to go with our workforce compared to where we're currently at also in 2018 based on our certification data. Um, for example, um, the population of midwife students was 11.43%. The black population in the US was 12.6% at that time. And the um, midwives in practice who were black um, was about 6.31%. When we look at other info about midwifery education in the US, we know that there's right around 39 to 40 programs operating at any given time. Um, we do have lots of deserts, just like maternity deserts for programs. Um, the program we're starting here in Iowa will address some of these deserts, bringing in new spots for folks, not only in Iowa, but sort of in that Western half of the US that you can see has no programs. Things that are required for certified nurse midwives and certified midwives in our workforce. Um, graduate degrees are what's required, whether that's a master's or doctorate, um, it's up to the student. If um, midwives come into the advanced practice world with a nursing background, they become certified nurse midwives. If they come in with another baccalaureate preparation, plus the required science and health science coursework, they are eligible for a certified midwifery. Um, there are a few states that um, recognize the CM credential, and that has been building significantly over the past few years for the same reasons that we hope it can build, continue to build nationally to in increase workforce in states that need more help. Um, programs are required to be accredited by ACME and graduation from an accredited program is required to be able to take the boards from the American Midwifery Certification Board. Um, after the boards are passed, uh, a midwife can get licensed in the state that they will practice in. And there's practice in all settings, whether that's at a hospital, which is where most midwives practice uh, in birth centers or at home. And midwives have prescriptive authority in all states and their care is covered by most payers. When we look at the distribution of midwives across states um, and how they're attending births, we see that there are certain states where there are more births attended by midwives with um, New Mexico and Alaska kind of leading the way there. And then a, a large um, section of states where there's a low percentage of midwives attending births. Uh, when we look at our scope of practice regulations, um, you can see the dotted lines indicate that collaborative agreements required 
the diagonal lines indicate that supervision is required and when it's a solid color, um, those states allow for independent practice and we know independent practice can help improve access. The Institute for Medicaid Innovation um, reported uh, their, their findings related to um, midwifery-led care and the benefits for the Medicaid population. Um, in this report, they identified the midwifery model of care composing um, identification, empowerment, and advocacy as some of those core principles. Midwifery-led care means that the midwives are the lead healthcare professional for the care of the birthing person and for their newborn. When we look at models of programs, um, the model that we followed here in Iowa in development of our program was for the academic medical center model. And so in addition to tuition funding, because our program is based in academic medical center, we're able to um, apply for funding from CMS. And so there are pretty strict regulations for this. And so that's important to review if this is the type of model uh, that you would be wanting to pursue. So most, most middle free programs are based in colleges of nursing. So this is a, a new model. There's only other one program in existence at Bay State University where this program is functioning in this model. So some of the important things that, um, that a program must comply with are um, accreditation. So the program has to be accredited. Um, the program should lead to someone being able to do a job they can't already do with their current credentials. Um, they cannot be, um, you know, getting funding um, that's outside of what their hospital budget um, necessarily is. And all the funding and funds flow have to run through the hospital. The hospital must also have control over the programmatic curriculum and making sure that the students meet requirements for graduation. Uh, these duties um, for the administration of the program include collection of tuition, um, maintaining the payroll for the teachers in the program, the faculty in the program, and the students, um, the day-to-day -day operations of the program, and the hospital must um, be able to, as I said, um, provide those clinical sites in order for graduation. So lessons learned so far in our program, um, the consultant role was really important because you really don't know what you don't know when you're getting a program like this started. And so that, that was a very helpful and worthy investment. Um, startup of programs is expensive, but um, this model with the medical center model, these programs are self-sustaining um, after the program gets up and running and is graduating students. Um, you wanna make sure that you have enough time allocated to get the work done and the support staff are crucial for getting the work done as well. When we think about policies for scaling up the workforce, we know, as I mentioned before, a more recognition of the CM credential can help with um, both diversification of the workforce and just access in general. Um, more programs should be aimed at diversification. So starting programs at institutions like historically black colleges and universities, hospital-based education programs um, can help scale up the workforce, better funding, um, support from the federal side of things, and thinking about um, innovative pathway programs that focus on re-entry or second career. So the future of midwifery, um, thinking about equity and diversity in our workforce. The American College of Nurse Midwives does have priorities related to this in making sure our workforce and our um, you know, focus is on diversity, equity, and inclusion, both internally and externally in, in operations. And um, the commitment to anti-racism and equity is there within the organization. And I hope to see that becoming more prevalent as we move into the future. Thank you.